Hi, my name is Christine. This is my channel, Christine Says A Lot. And today I'm gonna to be talking all things measuring. And we're gonna start off with this big girl. This is my acrylic ruler, six inches wide, 24 inches long. It has one of those sturdy handle suction cup to it. And these rulers are not just for quilters. I use it very, very frequently. I will use it to measure my pattern. I'll use it to check that my pattern is on my fabric on grain. I will use it if I am tearing off a, from my big roll tracing paper so that I don't waste. I'll measure the length of what I'm pulling off and um, I use it for cutting long lines. This gets a lot of use. To me, this was really worth the money. I did use a coupon before I bought it. Joann's frequently has their quilting supplies on sale, 40% off. So I might have bought it at that time along with a coupon on top of that. But even without a coupon, I think that's worth having. And I'm going to link all of these items below. And of course, measuring tape, you need to pick out the right pattern size. So taking your measurements is important. I will also, if this is handy, use that in, in measuring my pattern to make sure, uh, especially if it doesn't have the finished garment size, then I might measure my pattern to calculate the finished garment size. Most of the indie patterns do include finished garment sizes, and I do mostly sew indie patterns. This is a no money measuring guide. This is an office file folder that I've carefully cut as a rectangular and a convenient size, and I have measured at different increments, starting at a quarter inch, so that I have a handy guide for turning the fabric up, ironing it down, and pressing it and giving it a good steam for an accurate, accurate depth. So this just cost me the sacrifice of a file, which I think everybody could do, and, uh, and a little bit of time. I actually used this ruler, this acrylic ruler, uh, to get my to get my measurements out accurately. I have been using this. Now, it's not beautiful. It is not gonna win any kind of award for beauty. I've been using this folder piece for about five years. And because there's a natural fiber content in the paper of this file folder, it can take the steam and boy do I steam it. And I have found this to be invaluable pressing tool for zero dollars. That is one of my most often used measuring tools. I have two metal rulers that I use quite frequently. This one, they both have inches and centimeters this one is 12 inches and it's one inch wide. This one is six inches and it's five eighths inch wide. So that's really handy if you're gonna be marking a five eighths seam allowance. And both of these are handy for marking and tracing patterns or if you have to mark a line because they're metal, they're not as likely to get nicked and beat up like the plastic rulers. I used to use plastic rulers for this purpose, and I found that they got nicks in them over time, and then I'd be running a pencil or a pen along to trace a line, and it would, it, I would get this little wavy bit because of the jagged edge. So these, not a lot of money, but a lot of value. And then I have two seam guides, seam allowance guides. I use both of them. 
This one is one I picked up at Joann's, I think. It's a Nancy Zeman. It's a very thin piece of plastic. And this one can go missing pretty easily. It can slide under a machine. It's so thin. I have misplaced it a few times. And not because I wasn't being tidy, but just by the nature of this very thin piece of plastic. But how this works, and I'm gonna demonstrate both of these for you because I don't think I can explain it adequately on camera just showing you like this. You drop the needle in the hole. So this hole for a quarter inch, half inch, so forth. And then you lower the presser foot and then you can take a piece of tape. I like to use pa painter's tape and lay it down next to it, and there you go. There's your seam allowance from where that needle is to that line. This is an acrylic template from SoSweetness.com. This one is harder to lose. I actually have two of these. I keep one by each machine. This one floats around. I tend to put this one in my travel bag and keep these by the machines. Again, you drop your needle, and then you, this you can slide whatever seam allowance you're looking for, and then line up the piece of tape. I'm gonna take you to the sewing machine and show you how to use both of these. So let's go to the sewing machine. Okay, here we are at the machine. I do have a seam guide here, but say I wanted to use uh, a distance that I don't have marked. Say I want to do a half inch. What I would do is just gently put my needle down. You use the So Sweetness seam guide first. Let's see where the seam guide is. I'm going to find the half inch slot. And I'm just going to slide that and get the thread out of the way. Then I'm simply going to take my painter's tape and line it up on the edge there. And there you go. I have a half inch seam allowance. Let me show you with this underneath it. And that's what it looks like. I can do the same thing. Bring my needle up with this one. This is the Nancy Zeman one. Find, oops, sorry about that. This one's a little more fiddly. All right, so I inserted it in the hole. Let me get a close look here. See those little holes? I put the needle in the hole. I lowered the presser foot. And where the edge of this template is, is where I have the tape. So you could see how that was a little more fiddly using the one with the hole than using the one where I could just slide this in clamping it down with the presser foot once you have it in place helps to keep it steady so that you can put your tape on that is a super super useful seam guide if you were working on a machine my juki here only does a straight stitch but my other machine i can move the needle and that's handy if you want to find the distance 
um, you want to, you want to get the perfect seam allowance with the edge of your press of foot to the needle. So several ways you can use this and I find it really helpful. Then I'd show you very quickly how I use my little hemming tool, my five folder tool. Say I wanted to do a one inch hem or press up one inch. Maybe I'm gonna press up one inch and then, well, let's say press up one inch and then press up another inch. So I've got a quarter, half, three quarter. This is my one inch line. So I'm gonna bring the end of my fabric up to that line all along the edge. Not the best example with all the fray threads on the end of the salvage, but I'm gonna hit it with the iron. With all that lovely steam, pull it out. And say I want to turn it up again another inch. I could just line this edge up with a line on the fabric. And give it another press. Now wasn't that quick and easy? I have two more seam gauges. The one I have down here in yellow, that is a Nancy Zeman seam gauge. The nice thing about this one is the numbers are rather large, so it's easy for me to stand here and double check my work, that it's an inch. And then I also have this inexpensive metal one that I can use. I tend to use this one more frequently probably because it's more accessible. I have several of these and I can quickly reach them. I find with the Nancy Zeman one, I'm a little unsure about that quarter inch and the half inch mark. Whereas on this one, it's very clear when I get to the quarter inch and the half inch mark. It's very easy for me to see on this one. So this is my preferred one. This one I would tend to use like with that astronaut flight suit that I made recently. I put Velcro and I wanted to have the spacing be consistent. So I, buy, I eyeballed the first two and then I took the distance between the first and the second Velcro, set it on this gauge, and that's where I used for placing the third and fourth piece of Velcro. So these are also very inexpensive. I use this one more than this one, but I do use this. I would say if I could only have one, it would be this 88 cent one. These are some of my favorite and most often used measuring tools. They don't cost a lot of money, but they sure do save me on time. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please give me a like and consider subscribing below. Join me in the conversation. I'm always looking for good tools, especially those that will help me up my game and save me some time. If you know of any, please include them in the discussion below. Till next time, bye.